Hey everyone, today is October 1st. We just got done with a camping video that I'll be putting up soon. A couple people in my videos of the garage vlogs have asked me to make a video of what kind of tools I own and maybe talk about them, whatever comes to mind, I guess. So, this is from a video we just made of old turtle soup. And we got a solution for that can opener so it can't rip things anymore. We just got to put a piece of tape over this unnecessary thing it has. So these, I use these a lot. After years and years of not having battery-operated drills, I finally went to the Home Depot and I bought this kit here. It came with the two drills, came with a charger, and it came with two batteries. And I bought a third extra battery because when I'm doing jobs, I'm back and forth and inside, in and out of the house. Sometimes I use, if I'm screwing things down one after another, this will burn through a battery before the next one's charged. That's why I got three of them. Yeah, the third one came with an extra charger of its own. This is a stud detector. I've only used, I think, what did I use it for? I know I used it to put that towel rack up, but there was something big. I don't remember. Something big. I was afraid of it ripping out of the actual wall. So I bought that. I don't remember what I paid for it. But I was kind of mad because then I found um, I found a better kit for less money. The one with less money, I think, came with a third tool at Lowe's. A different kit. Bought this separately. You might be wondering, why do both of these have paint splatter all over them? This is absolutely covered in paint inside and out. But everything still works. So I was working on my car. I spray paint everything black the entire frame every year because when I'm off-road, it like sandblasts it. Dehumidifier turned back on. And it, there's parts of the frame that are literally shiny with bare metal. Then the road salt in the winter would destroy it. So I have to get down there like once a year and I have to touch it up. My truck I don't have to put up on ramps because it's got a lot of clearance. But my car I had to put it up on ramps. And I got back inside the car and... No, I got in the car to back it up on the ramps, backed up too far. It fell off the ramp onto a spray paint can, which exploded over all, all over countless items. Thankfully, I don't have a paved driveway. I have gravel. I just raked it, and it went away. Here I got some drill bits. It's a pretty cheap set. I think that came from Harbor Freight. But they work great for wood. I've used them on metal. They, I haven't ruined any of them yet, and I've done a bunch of things with them. That kit works good. Those are concrete drill bits, which I'm pretty sure are all dull and wore out. I use those for reopening one of the abandoned wells in the woods. This used to be a logging camp, and I have dug wells with concrete covers, like the kind you see in movies people are afraid to fall down inside. So the concrete cover, I use these to drill a bunch of holes because I couldn't find a masonry hole saw big enough for the pipe. Eventually it worked. Here's a unibit. I learned about these over the years. Don't buy them at Harbor Freight. you got to spend the money. I bought a two-pack at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks. I broke them both in a matter of 10 minutes. This one here is an $80 bit, and I've used it for hundreds of holes through thick metal. It's a little dull, but it sure went through so much stuff over the years. That worked awesome. And I got a good deal here on paintbrushes for doing little touch-ups and stuff. Always got to look at the discount shelf every time we go into Walmart. See, do we got discounted spray paint we'll use for a project at some point. I think I got this, uh, I thought it was a fly trap. I was like, wow, I forgot about the, yeah, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of flies in the house right now. And this is a toilet ring. Um, this is a, for using the chainsaw. If you don't want a shield or safety glasses that fog up, this is good. It can't fog up. It's just a little screen that'll most likely hit whatever's coming towards your eye. Got more paintbrushes up there. Ear protection's very important, everybody. Oh, more discount spray paint, 250 This is the drill I used to suffer with before this. If you want to see me suffering with that, look up the video of me making my old, making a wood stove out of a propane tank trying to use that unibit on that got no power well anyways a few years ago I was stupid I was ripping up ceramic tile without any ear protection 
I had a ringing sound in my ears for, I think, over a year. It thankfully went away. So now, I have to use these for every, every little job I do. You buy them in bulk, it's cheap. Got 200 pairs for about 16 bucks on the internet. It's a good price. And I also got the big earmuff type I use for mowing the lawn. You can put earbuds underneath them. You get them in Walmart's firearm department. Also, go into a cheap place like Harbor Freight. They got the 98 cent safety glasses. If you scratch them or they get really dirty, just throw them away and grab another one. Your eyes are more important than a few dollars, so I keep a bunch of those around all the time. So over here on my big tool shelf, what do we got? Found this thing free on the side of the road. I like collecting signs. I love Walmart's discount shelf. Look at this. 10 cents from $3. And these actually smell really good. I, I, well, when I bought these at Walmart, they had like pallets of boxes of thousands of them trying to get rid of them for 10 cents. Because, you know, during COVID, everyone went crazy with hand sanitizer and germ-killing soap. So after, after a while... They couldn't sell it. They had pallets of it, and they were just trying to get rid of it at all costs. So I must have bought like 50 of them. And I wish I bought more, because look, over the past couple of years, we used them all up. Hand sanitizer gel, a dollar. It doesn't say what it used to be. These, oh, I think my mom got me those. This is from the discount shelf. Gigantic things of antibacterial soap, a dollar, down from like 20-something. But these, these ones suck. This smells good. It works good. These suck. This is like the cheap soap they put in the soap dispensers in Walmart's bathroom. It feels like your hands are still dirty after you use it. It's low quality, but it smells good. This is hand sanitizer. This is like the really cheap stuff during the pandemic when they were forcing alcohol companies to make it. It's really watery, and it smells like chicken juice. It's kind of disgusting, but I couldn't help myself. They were 10 cents a piece, and worst case, maybe you could use it in an alcohol camping stove. I'm thinking that. Somebody said I might be able to do that with them. And I think these were also discounted. Maybe. I'm sure this was discounted. It just doesn't say. I don't know why else I would have bought that if it wasn't super duper cheap. And these were also... That's not as, that's not as good of a deal as that. But I'm getting off subject. Down to this is my electrical stuff. I brought this in for the year. This was these timers are awesome. Buy them now when Walmart's trying to get rid of everything. Ninety percent off in the garden department. Sprinkler timers are so awesome. This was to make sure if I was gone during the hot summer, the frog ponds wouldn't dry up. Also to circulate the water because there's so many of them in a tight spot, so it wouldn't pollute their water. This is a motion sensor that I wanted to put in the laundry room. This so right here was really cheap. It's goat dewormer. It was 50% off. Does anybody know, can I put this in the woods and maybe help out the local deer before this goes bad? I actually thought about getting some type of goat or something, but after I researched it, uh, it would have got expensive fast, so I didn't do it. Um, I got a lot of things in these boxes I'm probably going to go through and throw out. This is most likely garbage. I don't need certain things. I got to go through these and I'm going to donate a bunch of it. Like random chains. Like It's just taking up space. It's way better to just buy it in the future than have it so many things you're never going to use together occupying your space. But the electrical stuff, I do my own electrical stuff all the time. So this will eventually be used. But am I really going to use that old shower head? And also... Yeah, this this is an after wall box. This you put in the wall, and then you turn this, and it jams behind the sheetrock, so you don't have to make a big hole. It's uninvasive. You don't have to touch up the wall at all when it's installed. This is all electrical stuff. This is all electrical wires. These are salvaged electrical wires that I'm gonna reuse. That got nothing wrong with them. That's brand new electrical wire over here. And I just did it. I had to replace wires that mice were chewing. And that's like lamp wire. This is good wire here. I think we got more discount shelf finds. I think this ant killer was a dollar. 
which I will do perimeter spray on my house, but I won't put this because I'm worried some animal's going to eat the ants in the yard, but I'll spray against the immediate building. And I also don't want that getting into groundwater. I'm worried about that. This is for fishing electrical wires through conduits. I bought this to put heat cables inside the drain lines around the house because they freeze up in the winter time. Back here, when we were dumpster diving at a local store, they were throwing out their commercial surveillance system from the building. Isn't that cool? Giant camera housing. Now the cool thing about these is that a lot of people don't realize how cool these are from when I've installed surveillance things in the past. These big cameras you see at supermarkets and stuff, the camera's tiny. It sits on this little track inside of here. This big thing's not the camera. That's just to protect it. It's got a heating element. It's like a defroster in your car so the window in here doesn't fog up. It's got a fan on the back of it with vents. Where are the vents? It's underneath it, the vent. It can vent itself. It's got heaters in there. It's got all kinds of cool things inside this housing unit. I actually use the bracket that goes onto the building for birdhouses. I'm sure you've seen those in my videos. Those are kind of cool. I also put one, an actual whole camera in the woods. I removed the glass window. I'm hoping a bird will use it as a house. But in my experience, birds don't like metal houses. They want wood. And on my property, they don't use the wood houses either because they got so many opportunities out in the woods. Over here is like my miscellaneous light bulbs. If a light bulb burns out in the house, I go running down to this box. These right here, also from the discount shelf. This is blue because on the 4th of July, I had a bunch of floodlights that were red, white, and blue. They're all from the discount shelf. Right here was very cheap roach-killing gel. I thought it would work for other creatures that came in the house. Like, we have earwig infestation sometimes in the spring. But the only thing that works with them is the perimeter stuff you put around your house. I also learned if you're doing perimeter spray, even if you have the electronic sprayer, it takes forever. Use a pump sprayer for like deck stain or roundup. Put, the, it, put it right on the foundation. It works so much better. I bought a ton of it because it doesn't say the price, but I guarantee you this was like 10 cents each. That's why I bought them, thinking it would work. Here's an old microwave I'm going to donate. I don't need it. Here's some gloves. Oh, the fireplace gloves. We'll be starting a fireplace up again soon. I know what's in here. This is brackets for metal shelves. You know, you put the tracks on the wall and you can move them around. All right, everyone, I'm back. I just took a little break, took a drink of water. Someone texted me, which was a great distraction because sometimes I'll go on for hours and my mouth will just be so dry by the end of it and it actually hurts after a while. But I don't realize until I'm done. Right here we got my circular saw, which I'm so glad I just replaced. This thing works good, and you see the bottom tilts, so you can do 45s and things, but it's not super duper accurate. So I just bought a brand new saw. I had to do a bunch of truss work. I built some wooden furniture, so I had to get a, what's it called, a Miller saw? I forget what it's called, but it's really cool. I got my square in there for getting good angles. I got another drill, which is now obsolete to me. I'll probably never use it again. Maybe I should donate it. Here's the thing. Drills that you plug in the wall, like new ones you get at Home Depot. Home Depot, a lot of locations don't even sell ones you plug in the wall. These days, if I think of one that you plug in the wall, it's one that's so powerful it'll break your wrist if it gets stuck. And you, you need those for special jobs. But an impact driver can actually usually do it anyways because it's like a hammer it can go through anything but a normal drill like i showed at the beginning of the video the plug-in one usually beats it but these vintage ones were so weak i'll probably donate it they're just taking up space and this is a vice i have a video if anyone's interested in completely fixing this this was a rusted piece of junk that was in my great grandfather's tool collection it was in such rusty rough condition we shined it up, made it look beautiful again, as best as I could back at that time with what I had. Yep, looks nice again. I have a whole process of giving it a bath. We soaked it for like a week in lemon juice and other stuff to get the old paint off. But that thing is, I think, over 100 years old. Should probably mount it somewhere. I don't have a good workbench. That workbench you saw at the beginning of the video, that can't hold much weight. Maybe I should build one. I love building things with lumber.
miscellaneous stuff. Over here are all my screws. Got electrical screws, deck screws, structural screws, sheetrock screws, indoor screws, outdoor screws, lath screws, low profile ones, staple gun. These are my most common tools. These are all my electrical related tools. These are actually really good tools and they got a lifetime warranty from Harbor Freight. They feel really good in the hand and they're good if you're on a budget. I also have much better tools over here, which are actually insulated for electrical work made by Klein. This actually does feel a lot better in the hand. Like there's very, there's no give to it at all. But you see, they are very similar except these ones here are like five times as much as those, but they're insulated. I actually saw a cool video online. A guy, so many people in the comment didn't understand what he was doing. He was testing out to make sure a machine worked. Supposedly they get a machine in electrical shops. They will put an electric terminal on this and they'll stick it down into water. And if there's any break in the insulation, it'll show an arc coming out of it. So this guy, he ruined one of the screwdrivers. People were so mad at him. He was testing a machine that's probably thousands of dollars with like a $20 screwdriver. Who cares? He was testing a machine for an educational video. They were so mad at the guy for cutting the insulation to show how the machine will find a leak. What else have we got in there? Pill containers that I thought would be good for screws I should probably throw out because I'm not using them. I lose Sharpies all the time going out doing jobs in the yard or whatever. But that box has lasted quite a few years. Amazed by it. This is for holding EMT pipe, electrical pipes to the wall. Another stupid impulse buy on the discount shelf. I thought I could use this for something. This is for people during COVID who were afraid to touch door handles. You put it on your keychain to open doors. And... And here's a high quality splitter I bought on Amazon for the garden next year because I couldn't find one that was high quality in the store. See this? I wanted a splitter that didn't have valves and nobody sold it. So I went out and got it. And it even came with Teflon tape inside there, which is cool, but we won't need it. Garden hoses all have their own gasket, but I think that Teflon tape is in case you're using it for like a indoor project that's permanent. Gives you extra protection. At different times, we got flashing tape, we got UV resistant tape. That's a gigantic sheetrock hole saw because this house, when I bought it, kitchen only had a light above the sink, which is actually, I think, a code violation. It's supposed to have at least one light. The only rooms are the living room and bedrooms that don't need one by code. They'll just have a switched electrical plug. I'm sure a lot of you in the comments probably have houses like that. I can't stand dark rooms like that, so. I went ahead and I put recessed lights in every single room. Recessed lights are like $10 a piece. Did I put every single room has recessed lights, like an excessive amount too. Like this room here, for example, it had just that fan. Now it's got bulbs everywhere. Because when you know how to do electrical work, it's very cheap. It's the labor that an electrician will charge. I probably did, since I've owned the house, 20 grand in electrical upgrades, but I did it for maybe a couple thousand over the years. This is for, no, that's reciprocating saw. So I would tell you the majority of these tools, I'd say 80% of them or so, were bought at tag sales over the years, mostly throughout my childhood. Most of these tools I've had for extremely long amounts of time. This, the saw for this is actually in the garage. This is like a, for a skill saw. I can go around and follow lines and things with it. This is the box I grab when I got to go do electrical work. When I was doing apprentice work, I had a bunch of boxes like this. Keep everything organized. Go in here. These are the most common types of wire nuts, so we got a whole bunch of them. The lesser common ones, like my entire time doing electric work, we've only used these gigantic ones, I think twice, and it was for splicing 50 amp wire in a box. And those teeny little ones are for like doorbell wire.
Uh, this pillow container is working good. See? These are things you don't often need doing electrical work, especially new electrical work. Your switch plates and switches and plugs, they all come with these. 632, 832 screws. But sometimes you lose one. You drop it in the construction, so you can't find it. 1032 is very rarely used. You use that if you strip out an 832 hole. You use a tool to re-thread, and then you use the bigger screw. That's how that'll work. Washers and things are for when... The sheet rocker messes up or the electrician puts the box too deep in the wall. You can extend it a little bit with the washers. Discount shelf bug spray and discount shelf hand warmers. There's a lock. Empty boxes. Drum liners. Light fixture I kept, but I'll, actually I should donate that light. We don't need that. This is a case for my grandfather's reciprocating saw. He let me borrow it last year, and he hasn't needed it yet, so he's letting me hold on to it, because I, I find more projects to do, I guess. This is a grate that I bought. I forget what I needed it for, or what the intent was. This is a big variety pack so I can fix bumpers and things on the car if they happen to fall off so I don't have to pay a mechanic 100 bucks to put a 5 cent pin into the car, which has happened. I had a electrician, I had, no, I had a car mechanic, he, he told me, okay, you, you are going to fail your safety inspection because you have a plastic skid plate underneath that is for aerodynamics, it doesn't protect anything because he thought I was an idiot, that's what it's for. He, he was telling me how concerning it was. And he said, okay, I gotta charge you like 1200 bucks, we're gonna buy you a new plastic skid plate. And keep in mind, it wasn't cracked or anything. I came home and I used two plastic pins to put it back up. He thought I was an idiot because I had it strung up with bungee cords temporarily because I lost the pins off-road. That same guy also tried to sell me a brand new oil pan because it had a dent in it that's been there for hundreds of thousands of miles. I've bottomed out in my old car hundreds of times off-road, and I am very lucky that I never got stranded bottoming out on that oil pan all those times. But Toyotas are tough. That's, I, I don't even have a skid plate on that car, and that's what happened. So he he tried to give me all kinds of BS, like, okay, there's a little dent in your oil pan. It's not gonna The oil's not going to flow around. It's not going to lubricate properly. Even if that were true, it was hundreds of thousands of miles ago. I'm not fixing it now. So I went to a new mechanic, and he passed the inspection. Obviously, because those weren't issues. The guy I later brought it to, he actually didn't even care about an actual violation. The violation was one of my headlights in the rear has fog in it, which it, you're supposed to fail for that. You never know when you can get stranded somewhere. And this toolbox here has helped me out of a lot of binds off-road and stuff. See, this is also covered in the paint that exploded everywhere. This aluminum toolbox here came from Harbor Freight. I don't think they make it anymore. Well, they do, but it's slightly different now. So in here are more cheaper tools. Now keep in mind, everyone, this is in my car. I will maybe use these tools a few times a year. So I just bought cheap tools. All these tools are cheap, but it can very well help you if something goes wrong. Super glue. Zip ties. I also need to get more uh, metal zip ties, which are good if you, part of your exhaust happens to fall off for whatever reason. I hear every nut and bolt size in case you need to fix something on the car when you're off-road. Here's a whole kit of those plastic pins. WD-40, a whole kit of the little screws, safety glasses, electrical tape, gloves... Allen wrench, I forget what that's from. String, which has come in handy before for tying up plastic parts of the car that are starting to fall off. Duct tape, clamps, just some things that could become very useful if I get myself stuck. Inside the spare tire compartment of my car, that's a pump got fix a flat got a water filter where I'm from you can find water basically anywhere if you break down within walking distance not if you're in the desert 
you're going to want to carry water. Got a manual pump because I don't trust this one failing. Got a bunch of patch and plug kits. Got some MREs in case I'm stuck for a long time. Bunch of MREs. Got a tow strap because I've been stuck before. But that's another drinking straw. And so many people offered to pull me out. No one had a tow strap, so I carry one now. Yeah, my car is like running on its last leg now. That thing's got like th almost 350,000 miles. I just keep it to, so I don't um, put a lot of miles on the new car, basically. And because I don't think it's worth selling it for what people would offer me at that mileage. Because of that miles, I took off collision insurance. So I'm I'm protected if... People are covered if I hit them, and I'm covered if someone hits me. But if I crash into some inanimate object, they're not going to fix my car. If I crash into somebody, it'll fix their car, but it won't fix mine. That's basically what, what that means. I don't care about it anymore. So this is the toolbox I keep in the truck. I don't think I've ever used it yet because I've never broken down in the truck yet. The old car in the middle of the winter, I broke one of the shocks off, and I had to fix that shock because it was pressed against the tire so hard if I drove a few miles down the road it would pop the tire so I had to disconnect the strut and everything now these tools are a bit better these are actually Klein tools these pliers are all Klein tools and these are Husky tools here which are a bit better quality this is Harbor Freight this is Harbor Freight no that's some other store's knockoff brand I have no idea all I know is my dad bought that like well over 10 years ago and we got the daddy long leg Get out of there. Got duct tape. Got a socket. I usually don't keep... Oh, that's why I have that socket. That special socket right here. I think it's actually made for some sort of spark plug. But sometimes I need... This is to get the cover off of my winch line. In case I somehow rip the rope out of there. Like, like, like I did once by accident because I didn't leave enough rolls around the spindle. I pull it right out, and you need this to access that. Then I got a hammer, more bolts, and my truck doesn't use those plastic pins. It has all, it's all metal. The skid plates are held on with bolts, so I don't technically need that, I don't think. And in my vehicles, I also keep a jump starter, which has saved me twice in the past year because... The old car, three times this year, didn't start. It might be the alternator. It might be the battery. Wh whatever it might be, that car is not going in the wilderness again, so I'm not fixing it yet. These toolboxes here I inherited from my dad. I made a video a while back donating any tool I knew I could never possibly use, which... There were so many tools in there. They were so severely rusted. They were like 100-year-old wrenches. And here's the thing about 100-year-old wrenches. You put them on a stuck bolt, they actually bend. New ones, they keep their hold until they crack. But overall, the older ones never worked as well. And plus, they were very dirty and needed restoration. I don't know if someone did that, but I donated them all. These are roofing. This is a variety pack of... Screws. Let's see what we have in here. Hammers. Screwdriver kit. I only kept what I needed. Like, when I inherited this from my dad, and I couldn't believe he dealt with this for years. Like, he, he had like 20 of every single tool, so he couldn't even shut the doors. It was a challenge getting, you couldn't even know what was underneath some of them. But I think this is cute. Look how small these ones are. It's kind of cute. Well, this has to be open for these to come out because this top, the tops here are toolboxes you can throw in the back of your truck. That's why they're smaller. That's a socket set. Little tiny screwdrivers and razor blades. And a bunch of wrenches. Those ones I just had to keep because they're the old craftsman ones. I didn't throw out any of those ones. It was way worse, like I just said, getting these drawers shut. Here are a bunch of socket extensions. I have a bunch of complete socket sets. This whole drawer was originally filled with hundreds of rusted ones. 
like I said, I got rid of them all. You can still see the stains from all the rusty tools in there. But my dad was someone who never wanted to part with anything. He had so many broken machines around the yard. You know, he meant well. He was going to fix them, he says, at some point. But, you know, things like that never happen. And here's a bunch of C-clamps. This is for, like, fence posts leveling them out. Here's a bunch of solder. There's a solder gun in there. Keyhole saw. A couple other random things I kept for... Everything that's in there I kept because I wanted it when I was going through it. Got my log splitter there. And this, I can't... I gotta not show you this while I remove it. It's my dad's handicap placker. And his military IDs that were just in the top here. I only kept them in his toolbox just because. And here, look, here's a new Dewalt thing instead of the one that's all covered in paint. Or does it open the other way? Why is that not opening? I don't know, but it's, it seems full. And this right here is for making a line on the ground, perfectly straight, a chalk line. And here's some, I think I kept those because they're bigger than most sets have. And here's a whole nother complete set of sockets. Tiny little drawers. These you put in a drill, you can sharpen or wear something down. Look how cute this wrench is. I'm pretty sure that's a joke. I'm pretty sure that came out of like a gumball machine, but I think it's cool. I kept it in here. This I thought was cool. Now what do you guys think of this? Did my dad break this using it as a hammer so he decided to make it into a hammer? Or someone in my comments said that this was too hit with a hammer on a really stuck bolt. Um, here's a bunch. Oh, this could have came in handy earlier today. One of those sizes at least. Tiny, tiny little stars. This is a drawer of files. I use the chainsaw ones. Every single time I go chainsawing, just a stroke on every single tooth. Just one or two strokes, it'll save you a ton of time if you wait for it to completely dullen. And this right here was a drawer of a bunch of tools I just didn't need. You can even see the rust stains of the tools. So... I, I learned a while back that you're way better off not being a hoarder than being a hoarder. It's not comfortable always having things in your way. This log splitter works awesome from Harbor Freight. The hand pump one. The only thing I had to do is the pull slide all the way through. You could drill it, but I just put hot glue and that solved it immediately. Works good. I also got their um, electric one. Good thing about the warranty, it's been returned twice. The hydraulic piston keeps blowing its gaskets. And I'm using the, it on mainly pine, which is softwood. Imagine if I had, like, oak trees. Right here we got level. We got the axe. That's for aerating the ground with the little spikes. These are extra saw blades in case I break one. I actually bought them because I wasn't sure if my new saw came with them. Got this saw right here I just bought, which is great for doing jobs. I'm not going to bolt it to a table because I'm going to probably bring it a lot of places. Yeah, that thing works good for doing angles. Does anybody know what's the point of this that I removed? The first time I used it, it cut right through it. Why was this there? Got more things on the wall. I used to use these, but it literally seemed... Deer didn't even seem to move or notice it. Got my bolt cutters. This is a box of miscellaneous tools I'm thinking about donating. And here's star bits. Bunch of random nuts, bolts, screws, things like that. This is what I was talking about earlier. Hearing protection is important. Safety glasses are important. Always have a lot of safety glasses. Got more, two more socket sets. These are the ones I use on the lawnmower. I have this cart I can put tools on and bring it outside if I gotta work. Got some brushes. I think those are tire chains for the snow blower. Garden tools, saws.
things like that. I just replaced the entire attic because the old attic was it was only built to support the garage door tracks, but now I can store so much up there. A contractor I knew said they only had to hug over about an inch because you would never get them in there perfectly, it being an existing building, unless I did every single one like that. But that one I literally couldn't fit in here, but that's okay. Now I can put thousands of pounds of weight up there, I was told. Instead of being afraid to walk up there breaking the two skinny 2 by 4s holding up the garage door. This right here was my dad's air compressor. And um, the first time I got it, I went underneath. There's a little tiny valve underneath here, which I leave open. When you, Every time you're done using it, you open the valve and let all the pressure out. If you don't do that, water starts building in, in the bottom of it. When you compress air, it creates condensation. If you're using this thing all day, there'll be a puddle in here. It'll fill halfway with water if you're using it years and years every day. Like if you do a job where it's the machine's always running, you have to drain it because it'll rust it from the inside out. It'll look brand new and painted. Then suddenly one day, I've seen videos on YouTube. It's very, very rare, but it happens. Whole thing will explode because it's rusted out from the inside from the water. So every time I'm done with it, got to let the pressure out. I'm saying that because when I got it, it was full of water. So I have no idea how much, how bad the damage is on the inside. But I can't believe this thing's still running. My dad bought this thing 20 years ago. It's a obviously a knockoff brand, but it's still working. This is a generator I got at a tag sale. Guy or the lady wanted 50%, I mean $150. It wouldn't start. The lady said, more times you pull it, the cheaper the price gets. I got it for like 75 bucks, I think, and brought it home. Gas tank was full of a brown liquid. It had like 20-year-old gasoline in it. Just changed the gasoline, cleaned the carburetor, started right on up. No problem. And look, there's those ramps with all the paint splatter I was telling you guys about. And here's another screen from when we go out chainsawing. Right here we got a bunch of nuts and bolts. You see how this wall here is red? That's why sometimes I call the garage the barn. Because this wall's red, because the house used to be red. But when it was repainted, they never painted the inside or... No, it couldn't be. Somebody painted this wall red after the garage was built, because this is an addition. Yeah. Had to have been. But up here we got like mouse traps and stuff. I don't use mouse poison anymore. That's from a few years ago. I refuse to use it anymore because I don't want the animal going outside, dying and something eating it. Up here we got respirators in case we do a dusty job. I bought a bone saw in the hunting department because it was like 90% off. No one wanted it, thinking I could use it for something else. Hacksaws. Got a bunch of padlocks. Somebody was asking me to show them in a video. I got more somewhere. These mouse traps work better than anything else. Peanut butter's never stolen, and they're humane. Kills them pretty fast. I will never use things like sticky traps, because the animal there can suffer for days, and it will die of... It'll die from probably thirst. Bunch of screws and things there. Over here, when I originally bought this house and it was abandoned, my uncle gave me this, which I later on found out. It most likely came from Harbor Freight. It's a great chainsaw. It worked good for years. It still works. Now I got the Craftsman one I got for 50 bucks, brand new at a tag sale. Never used. Works awesome. It's good to have multiple chainsaws when you have a blowdown of trees and you have friends come and help. Or if you go to help someone else. I recently bought this as a commercial chainsaw. This has tiny residential teeth that has full-size teeth, so it goes through things like butter. It's amazing that saw there, but the price difference was insane. This one right here goes for about 150 bucks. The Craftsman. This one here, when it was purchased, I don't know, like a year ago, I saw it in Harbor Freight. It went for about less than 100 bucks. This one over here originally went for 1200 bucks. Got it during a sale for, I think, 600 and something. The Husqvarna dealer was 
I forget if they were going out of business or something, but I got a fantastic deal on that machine, and it, it makes life so much easier. This thing here, you'd be counting down. You'd be moving the blade back and forth, even when it was kind of sharp, and it was just a struggle for cutting logs constantly every single day. That thing made life so much easier. Got the come-alongs, which I use for trees that are near a building or something I don't want to damage to make sure they fall in the right direction. Two-stroke oil. We always put stabilizer in gas cans that might be sitting around for a year or so, so the gas doesn't go bad. Many times I'll go and pick up these chainsaws and they just will not start. Pour out the fuel, fill up with new fuel, it starts right back up. That's always the problem, it seems. This lawnmower I just fixed last week after over a year of dealing with it rapidly shaking, the blade had a little inch of the end of it missing from hitting a rock, and I didn't know about it. I just replaced the blade, perfect now. Replaced the front wheels, which were worn out. They have plastic drive gears, runs and can pull you now up hills. Really helps on mowing hills. Gave it a new discharge because the old one wouldn't fit it properly. Now it doesn't fall off anymore. So 30 bucks worth of parts it made the machine work like new again. It's always a good idea to keep tools in multiple spots. So I'm sure I'm not showing you guys 100% of what I got. This is the shed over here. And we got some things in here, like we got snow blowers. The old one from the 80s, which I absolutely love. I brought it in for service. Two shops told me we're unwilling to work on that machine because our insurance won't cover it if we accidentally break it on you. And the guy told me it's probably going to need a machinist to make it parts, which I would have 100% paid for a machinist to make me parts, but... Yeah, the problem was couldn't find someone to do it, so I eventually bought the new snowblower. It works great. The thing is, that old one works better, but it has engine problems. It revs so high, and you can't do anything about it but shut it off. People told me it's probably the governor going bad in it, but that old one weighs about 300 pounds, while this one weighs about half. The heavy weight really helped it in the snow, especially with chains. The old one was durable. It's got strong metal. When this thing's running, idling, it's bumping around. All you can hear is the flimsy sheet metal moving around. And this, oh, this new one is awesome as far as the chute. It's got cable, so it moves around really fast. But long term, I was told that'll go bad. That old machine is just such a fantastic machine. That's the only reason I keep it. Just hoping I'll find somebody someday who will be able to properly fix it for me. And I would have paid the price of this brand new one into that machine if I could get somebody to make it new again. But couldn't find anyone. Up here's a bunch of raccoon traps. That's all for camping the little buddy heaters and tons of propane because... If you guys have seen my camping videos, we'll burn through sometimes almost an entire tray of those cans if we're on a winter camp and it's like negative 20 degrees. We'll burn through so many of them things. Why do I burn through those? I actually got the thing for a big grill tank because that's not always convenient bringing out miles into the woods. But if I am camping with my toboggan, you better believe this year I'm bringing the big giant 20 pound grill tank instead of these little tiny one pound tanks. This right here is a nice little step stool. It's got some tools in it. I'm thinking about just donating this. I really don't need another toolbox. And I also got places like my kitchen junk drawer. I got common screwdrivers and other things, you know, but other than that, I think I showed you everything. A lot of people asked me when I was making my garage videos to show what tools I have. I'd say I got a tool for most things I would encounter. And most of them over the years I've picked up at places like estate sales. I've picked them up at um, mostly estate sales and tag sales. Someone dies, you go in their house, they, everything's for sale. Usually when the family is, lives far away or somebody just didn't want to deal with it because a lot of times it's a hoarder's house. 
so they'll pay someone to just sell everything off. That's where most of it comes from. It depends what kind of estate sale you go to. Sometimes if someone's doing an estate sale themselves and they're eager to get rid of everything because they're moving across the country real fast for whatever reason, you can get things so cheap, pennies on dollar. You can even get awesome deals like that if a company is doing it. Because some companies, I've honestly encountered like elderly people in their 90s running estate sales. And they're doing it as a hobby. They usually keep themselves busy, not usually doing it to make a profit. But then you'll encounter a company, it's almost as expensive as the store. You'll encounter companies like that too.